Hello, everybody, and how are you all doing today? It is Rusty Champagne here with you, and I hope you are having a wonderful day. We are actually, this is actually the uh, From the Future, uh, future editor Rusty Champagne here, doing my very first voiceover of a game. This is House Flipper 2. So when I first tried to do this video of this, I did not realize that I had left my microphone off from after my last stream had ended. So I did a whole video and there was absolutely no sound whatsoever. So now we are going to do the video again with me trying to uh, talk about what it was that we were doing in this episode. So the first thing that we're going to be doing here is we've uh, made our way to our email and as it turns out tom marino is getting ready to give us our very first house flipping job the thing that we've been waiting for this entire time is now finally coming to light we are getting ready to do a nice little house flip it is a little beachfront property that is going to be in not that great a shape as it turns out we are going to see that here in just a minute but we are going to take it from its ratty state and turn it into something quite beautiful right about now. Once I hit the begin job button, that is. So it is now getting ready to load up. And yes, here it is. This place is not in that great a shape at all. So first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on picking up some of the trash and getting all of that squared away. Now it's gonna turn out that there's going to be one extremely difficult piece of trash to find out here. And it's going to really mess with us until the very end of the episode. And, but we do eventually find it. It's just really a challenge to find it. We're gonna end up walking around the building a number of times in the attempt to find it. But now we're actually, we've switched gears and we're going around and selling everything that we can sell that is valuable. And as it turns out, you can sell sticks. I did not realize that you could sell sticks, or at least I couldn't remember because it had been a while since I'd been in here. So as it turns out, yes, we can sell sticks, and that is good to know. And we're also going around selling all the boards. We're also selling all of the old dead plants and all the planters. And then going around, we will swing our way around to the uh, sides and to the back of the house in a bit. So right now, we're just uh, going around and selling everything that we can sell. And as it turns out, we don't really even need to worry about it. We can trash everything because we do have the one perk that allows us to get money from everything, even if we sell it. Uh, so we don't actually lose out on anything if we trash something that is sellable. But still, just for the sake of uh, not for the sake of not having it be an issue, I'm just going around selling everything. Now we're actually up on the upstairs floor which is different from the main floor in terms of the things that you have available to sell. So it's uh, there, it's not the same up here as it is downstairs, but we're getting everything up here sold. And I think at this point, we now have it all taken care of. So now we're gonna get ready and uh, chuck a couple of garbage bags way down under the ground down there. I was trying to shoot for a little bit closer to the garbage can and missed by like four miles. <laughs> and we will eventually go and get those all taken care of. Uh, now it's time to do a little bit more trash collecting, get everything up here all squared away. And once we have that all taken care of, then we're going to get out here and do some vacuuming. It's always interesting seeing that we can vacuum up leaves in our vacuum cleaner. I did not realize that that was such a thing, but as it turns out, it is. So we're going to get all that taken care of, make that all look all nice and good. Going to move over here. And as it turns out, you move very, very slowly when you have the vacuum cleaner engaged. I'm not sure why that is. Apparently it is very difficult to walk when you're also holding a vacuum cleaner. I would have not thought a thing like that to be true. Uh, we now have all the stains done. And now at this point, we are going to actually start doing some decorating. Now the idea is to try and get the biggest stuff first to the extent that I can do such a thing. And then from there, uh, work towards the smaller stuff. So the first thing that we have is we have a couple of sun beds that we're going to set up here. So we're going to set those right kind of by the, um, uh, so that everyone's looking out over the, uh, so that they can see the water. Because that's what you want to do if you're on a sun bed. You'd rather be able to see the water as opposed to seeing like the beach or other people's houses or stuff like that. And now this is where things are going to get a little bit more interesting as well, because now uh, we have all these plants that we're going to plant in the planters. And the one thing that I did not do 
when I was first putting these plants in the planters is I did not look at the little blueprint that appears on the tab screen when you are planting things in the planters. So right now I'm just going through and thinking, okay, I'm just gonna plant all these little spider plants in the uh, planters. And if I do that, then everything's fine. And I can just move on to the next step and nothing to worry about. And then I get back here and I realize, oh no, I've got to plant these snake plants too. So where are they going to go? Because they're not going to really fit in here all this well, or all that well, <laughs> as things currently stand. I do manage to get three of them in here on the side. And then I get over to this side and it's like, okay, uh, these are not going to fit here in the middle. So what am I going to do? And at this point, I still haven't really paid attention to the fact that those are supposed to go in the middle. I mean, logically they do, but I didn't really think about that when I was getting my uh, original interior decorating on. So we're just still kind of looking. And now it's time to actually move some stuff over to both sides because we are now realizing, okay, we need to kind of plant those in the middle. So we're going to do that on these three planters. And the other three planters, we're just going to leave alone because there always has to be some level of rusty champagne jankiness when you're putting a house together. That's just kind of the way that we roll. And uh, you, you've got to expect that if it's a rusty champagne uh, special. So we're, we get these all put away. Everything all looks good here. And then we're going to take a look at those three and decide, nah, we're not going to put those. We're not going to change those. Those just are going to look kind of funny as they are. And uh, again, that way, you know, rusty champagne flipped your house or was involved in the decoration of it. Now, the next thing we have is this little table here, and we decide that we want to kind of put this table in between our little sun beds, just in case people want to set their drinks or lemonade or whatever it is on top of the table. So we're just going to get that set right about there. And then at this point, everything upstairs on the uh, upper deck, the sun deck, as you want, is now finished. And that's where I realized that, yeah, we should be putting those plants in the middle and we said, nah, we're still not going to change it on those three over there. We're just going to leave it as it is. It's fine. They'll they'll enjoy it. I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Uh, uh, I don't know what else to say. Now we're going to get back down here to the main floor and look for the other things that we have to sell. And it does become a little bit challenging finding some of the things here to sell. So we're still looking at what we've got on the list. And given the fact that this area basically encompassed the entire perimeter of the uh of the property it did make it a little bit challenging to find and of course i can't throw garbage in the garbage can because that's just me but we do pick up our garbage and we do get it thrown back away and that's all good and now we are once again uh deciding what we want to do in terms of whether we want to sell things and we do decide we're going to go back to selling things and we finally find the tires that we need to sell because those were on the list and we were just sitting here going, where are those tires? And we could not find them and realized that they were on the opposite side of the railing uh, out here in the sand. So we got all that taken care of, but we still have three things left that we have not figured out what to sell. And then we find two of them right there. So we have the planter and we have the, uh, we have the planter and we have the dead tree. And somehow I walked right by that final tree not realizing that that final tree was the thing I need to sell. It's still glowing, and I somehow still do not see it. And we'll just continue walking around the house wondering, what is this final thing I need to sell, and why can I not find it? Even though it was glowing like mad, and I probably hit it one more time, and from that distance it does not. But I think that if we, uh, if we turn around once more, we might see it. So at this point, uh, we decide it's time to abandon that because we, we did not see the thing that was glowing, even though it was like painfully obvious. Um, I, I do not have the eye for the obvious. That's just the way it is. And so now we're going to move on and get to more trash collecting. So we get over here, get all the trash taken care of, and we are going to then switch once again, change gears and go back to the stains. And I still marvel at how well this magical little towel or cloth takes care of everything and never needs to be washed and amazingly can get rid of every stain there is, including mold and other gunk. Because this stuff looks like someone should be coming out here and doing something in terms of remediation. And 
amazingly enough, our bottle of cleaner and our little cloth will, it, it cuts through everything. It just never misses, and you can always rely on it. Like I said, I don't think I've ever washed that cloth since I've had it. I think that that is still in the original state that it was in when I first got it. So uh, that's probably not something I should admit, but that's what we're going to go with anyway. Now we switch back over to trash duty, and now we're going to switch once again back over to cleaning duty. So I'm kind of alternating between stains and trash, because I think at this point I've still got like a, a few pieces of trash that I'm not being able to find. And I'm also now struggling to figure out where the stains are. I'm thinking maybe they're on the windows, and no, the windows are on the inside, so that's not it. So we're going to go around this way, and I missed the one stain that was on the ground right there, and I hit my squeeze bottle for no reason in particular. I found some garbage, so we took care of some garbage, and now I have the one piece of garbage that it's going to take the rest of the stream to find. There's the big stain that I magically somehow missed all this time, and we found that one. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking for garbage, nothing is showing up, and it will not show up until the very, very end. And even at the very end, it is not very apparent as to where it is. So we're gonna do this for a little bit longer, just kind of walking around and like debating and pondering and trying to figure out and contemplating and just killing time as we do in Rusty Champagne Land. At this point in time, we decide, okay, it's time to jettison this plan and let's move on to something else. So we're gonna start working on the inside and taking care of everything on the inside. The inside of this place is, to put it lightly, a mess. I don't know what happened. I don't know how it got to be in such a state, but it's not good. And so now we're basically selling everything that we can sell, which is basically everything we can get our hands on. and. <laughs> getting all of that out of the house so that way we can start working on putting down some new floors and also putting in some new furniture which is also going to provide plenty of its own challenges as we shall as we shall see shortly i do still find it funny that you can sell the dead plants i don't know why they have value but for some reason they do. And again, I'm not gonna question it. I've learned to not question things in these games, but for whatever reason, you can sell the dead plants and you will get cash for them. And, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, we've now sold everything that we can sell. And now we're gonna go through and start picking up the rest of the trash, which I think that this part went without too much of an issue because at this point now we're just inside. So it's pretty easy to see where all the trash is. There is like one last random piece of trash, and I think we do eventually find it. But again, we got to do some more flipper sense in order to figure out where it is. Uh, originally, I think that that thing up there in the upper left might be it, the little uh, the little beaver. But that is not it. That's not what we need. And so now, not figuring out where the last piece of trash is, we once again switch back over to the thing that we know we can do, which is going to be stains. And again, these stains... This does not look like something that should just be uh, cleaned up and disregarded. This looks like it should be something that someone really should be looking into. There's the last piece of trash that was just hiding in the stains. We'll eventually pick that up. And again, all these stains on the ceiling, this this looks like someone should be coming out here and doing some serious mold remediation because this, this is just not good. I mean, this is not dirt, especially if you have like a leaky skylight. That's not ever going to pass an inspection. So you're, you really would want someone to come out and take a look at that. But apparently here in the world of Crayfish uh, Cove or wherever we are, no one's all that concerned about it. As, as long as you go ahead and, and clean it up with your magic uh, cloth, everything's good. We finally found the last piece of trash. And so now, oh, and then we finally found the, mat, the last stain that was hiding on the wall over there. Now it's time to do some window treatment going to get all those taken care of that's all nice and clean i do love the squeegee in this thing it works really really nice on the small windows on the big windows it'd be nice if we had a bigger squeegee i'm not gonna lie it'd really be nice if we had a bigger squeegee but hey uh the the little squeegee is gonna work of course i'm gonna do some like loop-de-loops with my squeegee just because i'm funny like that and then we're going to go down here and i do love the fact that you don't have to completely clean the window in order for it to qualify as being finished it's nice that it follows the, hey, you're close enough, you can be done now uh, theory of cleaning. Because for Rusty Champagne, that is 
perfect. I am all about that level of cleaning. I wish I could get away with that in my own house, but it doesn't work that way for whatever reason. So now we got all the windows done and now we're actually going to take a look on the right. So at this point, I think I'm looking on the right to see exactly how we need to lay some of these things out. But before we do that, we are actually going to go ahead and we're going to put all the tiles in. I do decide that I do want to give the place a little bit of color instead of just the plain white. So we're, we're actually going to go in here. We're going to put in some nice sea green slash teal, whatever you want to call that color tiles. And we're going to put that right up on the corner. And this is where I make the joke, as I always make it, that if the if the customer doesn't like this color, there's not much of anything that they can do about it because they hired me to do the job. And as a result, I'm going to do what I see fit. <laughs> and if they're not happy with it, well, it's, it's kind of like one of those home renovation shows where they come and they look at it like, oh, can we have our old house back? It's like, sorry, you can't do it. Uh, you're just, you're stuck with what you got. And if you want to make a change yourself, then that's on you. But we're out of here. Peace out. Enjoy your new house, whether or not you even enjoy it. But that's a different story. Now, at this point, we do have to come to the realization that we can actually put down two different types of floors. We don't have to put down the exact same floor both times. And we decide at this point, now it's time to actually change over to the, uh, to the wood flooring for the floor and get rid of that really really ragged looking tile so we're gonna now do this part and just put up all the rest of the floors thankfully those floors match the floors that are already there which makes life a little bit good and i have to admit that looking at it again yeah that that green wall does not really match with that flooring but again that's just what you get when rusty champagne comes and flips your house for you you, you're, you're just going to have stuff like that. So that's how it goes. Now begins the fun part where we are going to start putting all of the things back in the room and buying all of the furniture. And this is going to be a bit of a process trying to figure out how we're going to get all this in. We decide we're going to start with the easy ones. The easy ones being the sofa and the coffee table because we did see those on our little blueprint that was on the on the thing on the right of the screen when you hit the tap button so those were easy enough we see okay yeah it's easy enough to put down a sofa we can do that no problem and then they want a coffee table so we're gonna take a coffee table and we're gonna just drop it there and then we're good but then we decide yeah the coffee table's a little bit too close to the couch so it's like time to move it out a little bit more. And then we look at it again. It's like, you know what? It's still a little bit too close to the couch. We want people to actually be able to sit on the sofa when they, uh, when, they when they decide they need a place to, to park themselves and not bang their shins or their knees on the, uh, on the coffee table. So we do try to be nice wherever we can. And now we're going to go around and put in the rest of the items. So now it becomes a matter of where do we want to put that little shelving unit. We decided we don't want to put it right in front of the window because there's not a really good plan. Or it's not a good idea to block the light with a giant shelving unit if you can avoid that. So we settle on that as a location. And then we notice that we've got that piece of furniture there, which is another, I forget what they called that one. I think that's a, uh, oh, just another cabinet. And then it becomes a matter of where do we want to put this cabinet. And we kind of take a look around the room and we decide maybe there, but again, we don't want to block the window. So we decide we're going to go right here in this corner with this cabinet. And it seems like it works out pretty nicely. So we kind of drop that there and then everything's good. So then we get to the point where we see what we need to put on top of the cabinet. We see, okay, they want the little uh, lamp, the little table lamp on top of the cabinet. So we go ahead and we do that. And then we have the bowls and the plants. Now, the thing that I don't realize when I'm doing this is that there are three different plants that I need to plant. And for whatever reason, I only buy one bowl right from the start. So I get one bowl and then we're debating, OK, which of the plants do we want to put in this bowl? Not realizing I really need three bowls because I've got three different plants there. So I buy one bowl and then I'm going to come to a realization later. It's like, well, I can't just take the other plants and just like set them on the table. That doesn't really work. I mean, even for me, I, I, I even, even I wouldn't do that. So I will eventually buy a couple more bowls, but it's going to take 
quite a bit for me to realize, yeah, you, you need more than that. So we will eventually get there. Now becomes the fun part, the kitchen, because this was not easy. So the first thing that we're trying to figure out is exactly where does this corner cabinet go? And I don't realize at the very beginning that this is the part that goes down low. And then I realize, oh, yeah, that's not the hanging one because the one that's hanging is called hanging. So we realize, OK, these are our corners. So this is our hanging corner here. This is our hanging corner here. That's easy. We can make that happen. But now is where it's going to really start getting to be a little bit of a mystery is how to do the rest of this because we got these hanging cabinets and we got these other cabinets and this part this part doesn't go too bad the stuff that's on the ground kind of goes okay and we're, we're kind of left to our own devices as to how we want to put this in place so we get those cabinets and then we notice that we have an oven and then we decide okay where do we want to put the oven and the first thought is that it should go in between those two cabinets and that's what we end up doing there's there's no issue there uh, because that's just the best place for it. I, we, we didn't want to have it right on the wall um, for whatever reason. I, I thought it looked better in the middle than having it on the wall. So we take it, put it on the wall, and then it's got a little induction stove, which we would want to have right on top of the oven. So we do that. And at this point, everything's moving along pretty smoothly. It, it seems like it's really not that big of an issue. That's going to change very soon. But for right now, we're, we're still doing okay. Uh, we've got a bread bin. Take the bread bin, kind of set it right over there. Everything's pretty good. Now we get to the fridge. And at this point, there's one logical place to put the fridge. Uh, but we're pondering it for some reason. And then we decide, oh, well, now we're going to actually put in the rest of the stuff in the kitchen. So we got the sink. And I could have put the sink. I could have moved the sink over by the oven. Don't know why I didn't. At that point, I just figured, okay, I'm, I'm good with where I am. And I'm just going to leave it there. It's, uh, again, it's probably not the best place. And it would have probably been better to have it right next to the oven. And I didn't do that. And then I noticed at this point that this one cabinet looks a little bit off on the end. And I realized I don't have it right up against the wall. And that's why it looked a little bit strange. So we go ahead and make that fix. And now we get into the giant dilemma of the cabinets. So they're asking for a couple of those cabinets. And I go ahead and I put those up. And then I realized they're asking for more cabinets. And now I'm getting into a little bit of a panic because I don't know where the heck these cabinets are supposed to go when I don't have that much space in the kitchen. And they certainly didn't have these kind of cabinets in the kitchen when we tore the kitchen down. So now I'm thinking, okay, should I move the fridge maybe? So we take a look and try and spin the fridge over into this corner and that's not working. And so now at this point, I'm now starting to get into a small state of panic, <laughs> just a small one. We're not we're not in full fledged panic mode yet. We're just in a small state of panic. And now we're just going to keep kind of keep moving things around. And now I've got this other cabinet. Now now we're getting into medium sized panic because now I'm looking at this and going, I, I don't know where the heck I'm going to put these things. I and then then I look and I've got another one and I'm like, where on earth are all these cabinets supposed to go? I don't know what I'm going to do. So now I'm starting to put cabinets in just random spots because it feels like the thing to do. And again, th these are not probably the cabinets that are supposed to be in here and they end up not being in here. But it's it's kind of funny watching me go through this at this point because I'm just like and if you've seen enough of my streams, you know me. I get to that point where I just start going, well, huh? And hmm and things like that and all, all the typical rusty champagne thought noises and and i'm still looking at this cabinet going i don't know what the heck i'm going to do with this because once i put this in here i've still got to put the fridge somewhere so now i start thinking maybe i should maybe put those over in the other room i don't do it yet but i start thinking it so the the, the thought process are starting to bubble because now i'm looking at the fridge and i can't put the fridge in either corner and I can't move the corner cabinet out of the way. So I'm really, really at this point in a quandary as to where all these things need to go. So I just go ahead, I take that piece, put it back there because that's the only place where that piece can go. And so now we got the, that part back in place. And now we're looking again at these cabinets. Like, okay, I still don't know what to do with these cabinets. And we're starting to now think, okay, maybe they can go on that wall 
in the living room. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to take these. I don't know if this is where these should be. And now I'm, I'm figuring out just now that I'm not close enough to the wall to place them. So they were they were showing up as red for a bit. And then finally, as I got closer to the wall, it's like, oh, OK, they can go there. Now, again, should they go there? I have no idea. I really have no idea. I, I'm not sure. But we're, we're putting them there. And again, do they match the couch? No, they don't. They absolutely do not. But we're, we're going to put them there anyway. And then we're going to take our fridge, put it back in place. And then we got this one cabinet that's left. And I'm like, now what the heck do I do with this? They want so many cabinets in this place that I just don't know where any of them are supposed to go. So we decide we're going to take that one. And we're just going to drop it there for now. It's going to move again, but we're going to figure out what we're going to do with it. Now we're going to actually get back to doing the rest of the kitchen, I believe. So I think at this point we do actually start looking at the other things in the kitchen. So now I think I'm realizing, okay, I've got these other plants. It still hasn't completely dawned on me, but I've got these other plants. And for some reason, I've got my flipper tool out. I don't know why. I'm not sure why I've got it out. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. But for some reason, I got my flipper tool out. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm thinking that there's something else that I can sell. Oh, no, I, I know what it is. I was trying to figure out how I can duplicate things. Because I just, I was, I, and I know that there's a way to duplicate things. I just don't remember what it is. So then, of course, in rusty champagne fashion, I sell it by mistake. So, and then I realized, okay, it's just as easy just to go in, buy the thing, and then buy multiples of the thing. So even though they didn't ask us to buy this many cabinets for the kitchen, I decided to buy more. I will buy even more in just a bit, but I'm, I'm at the point now where it's like, okay, we got more cabinets in there, but we really should get even more than we do. Now we got the dryer rack and I realize, okay, then the, the bread bin probably should move somewhere else because we do want to kind of have the dryer rack over by the sink. So we make that little adjustment there and put the dryer rack by the sink. And again, the sink would have probably been better next to the oven, but lessons learned. <laughs> there we go. Now we realize we've got the desk and because we have the desk, we can't put that cabinet there. And so the cabinet is going to go right there in that little nook. Um, right above the other cabinet that has our little lamp and one of our three plants. And then we get to putting the desk in place. There's a lot of decorating in this house. An absolute lot of decorating. So this is where, you, when you get to this point in the game, and again, this game's been around for a while, I, I definitely understand that. So for the people who played it, yeah, this is all familiar to you. And for the people who have not played it, this is the part where I can look at you and say, if you're really a fan of decorating, this is where you can really let it fly. You can really let it rip and do all kinds of fun things here. Because now we got the chair, we got the laptop, we got the desk organizer, and you can you can set everything up just as you want and make it look exactly the way you would like it to look. Now we uh, we finish up things in the kitchen, so now we've got even more shelves because there's never enough shelves, <laughs> and so now we start looking for places to put these shelves. And we decide we're going to put one right there again. Whether or not it should be there, I don't know. But that's where we went with it. And then we got this giant table that now we're starting to run out of room in the uh, in this little area here. And we're deciding, okay, we're actually going to start blocking the window and putting that there. The nice thing was with this towel is that you can actually take the towel and put it on the uh, bar. The, you can put it on the oven bar. So that's kind of nice because that's what you kind of do in reality. And then we do have to get back to our fish motif because there's always the fish motif in this game. And we uh, go ahead and we get our figurines put up. And I think it's at this point that I'm now finally starting to realize, okay, I've got a couple of plants left and I don't have bowls for them. And I don't think that serving bowl is where those plants go. So it's like, okay, now what do I do? Uh, yeah, that's a serving bowl. I can't use that for planting plants. So I do still have to put that somewhere and that's gonna go on the coffee table. And now I'm going, okay, well, I, I can't just leave those sitting on the table and they're not gonna go in the bowl. I, I could put them in there as if it was potpourri, but that would be kind of ridiculous. So we're not gonna do that. Instead, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go down and actually get a couple more plant bowls and then plant those plants. And, and of course, put it all on the coffee table, regardless of whether or not they want it on the coffee table. That's a different story, but that's where it's going. So this room was by far and away the most challenging room. 
this one, it, it took a lot of thought, especially with all those cabinets. I was really trying to figure out what to do with all those cabinets. And I believe that at the end, I do still end up going and buying a couple of more. Yeah, I think I look up in this section and I go, you know what? We really need to have another couple cabinets up there once I figure out where the heck they are on the screen, because there's always that too. And we do finally find them, our hanging cabinets, and we put them there. So now they got plenty of cabinets all throughout the kitchen and life is good. And then we are getting ready at that point to move on to our next location. I think at this point that I decide now that I've done the kitchen, maybe I can get back out here and I can see the things that I'm missing. Because I, at one point, I think with the cleaning, there were things that were glowing inside that were causing me issues outside. And, and so that's why I went and did the things inside. And then I realized that I've still got to set up this table and chairs. And now I'm going to spend some time looking at the table and chairs and going, okay, where do I want to put these? Because I don't want to buy the door because I don't want to block the doors. And then it's like, well, do I want them out in the sand? And then I realized, yeah, that's probably not a good place either. So this goes on for another 30 seconds of me just kind of looking around and deciding, okay, where do I want to put a table? And at first I think there, and then I realized, yeah, let's actually put it over in this corner, right over here. And so we settle on it there. And thankfully in the placement of it, the chairs do actually fit on both sides. Because at first I was sitting, sitting there thinking, oh, please let me know I can get a chair in there. Now, of course, whoever's going to sit there is never going to be able to get into that chair without moving the table because that, that table and the chair are right on top of each other. And at this point, I'm still trying to figure out where the last piece of trash is and where that other tree is. Uh, for all I know, it's something small. And again, I'm still looking left. And I think at this point, I finally realized that that's where the tree was. So again, it, it had been glowing the entire time but it took me that long to figure it out. But I still cannot find this one piece of trash. And again, when we see where that one piece of trash is, you're gonna understand what my plight was because it does not show up. I mean, it, it, we've, we've gone past the area where it is, but it does not show up. So I'm just flipper sensing like crazy, um, trying to figure out where the heck one piece of trash could be. And it's still not happening. So at this point, once again, I'm walking around the house, probably killing time, talking about nonsensical things, <laughs> as I tend to do. And at some point, I think I even decide that I need to walk upstairs and see if maybe there's something that I left upstairs that is somehow counting. But I don't know if I do that right now. It may be that at this point, I may go back into the house and start working on the other rooms. And yes, that is what I actually end up doing. So we're going to go into this room so here's our bedroom, which is also in very bad shape. So we're going to go in here and start doing the process again, selling everything that we can sell, and then moving on to all of the cleaning, all the trash collection, all the stains, and going forward with that. So now it's going to switch over to all of the magical stain collections. Like I said, I have never washed that rag, not once. <laughs> that that thing, it's uh, with, with too much more cleaning, it's going to turn into its own life form. And again, this stuff that's in these corners, this some some professional should come out here and take a look at this. They really, really should because this is not normal. <laughs> this is just this is not something you should just wipe away with the cloth and be like, okay, we're done, everything's good, nothing to see here. Please disperse. Yeah, we just uh, again. It's not up to me to say, but that's the way it goes. Now we now we get our first flipper perk point, and that was kind of exciting because we haven't gotten a flipper perk point yet. And so now we have to decide what we want. So we can decide whether or not we want to sleep in beds or whether or not we want to be able to run faster or whether or not we want to have an eye for detail where things are going to stay lit longer or if we want a flashlight. We decide we want things that can stay lit for longer because... That's a good plan. That's a pretty solid plan, especially given the trouble I was having finding the giant tree that I had to sell because I'm just not that good at looking at things. Uh, now it's back to the windows. We've got four windows in here, including the two giant storm doors, which again, they take a little bit of work, but still you don't have to clean the entire thing, which is nice. So you can get it like 85% clean and as long as you get to day 85%, then it'll uh, it'll take it from there. Everything will be fine. 
So we get this all touched up. Everything is good. And then from here, now we're, we're searching for one more stain, trying to figure out where one more stain is. Now, the thing we see, there is a stain that's up there. And we clean that, but for whatever reason, it still says that we have one more stain. And this one was interesting because I'm, I'm still looking and going, okay, where's the stain? Because I cleaned that one spot. And I think I hit the spidey sense again, and it still shows the stain. And I still show that I've got one stain left. And so now I'm like frantically cleaning over there, trying to, well, saying, well, I see the stain there, but then I realize there's this one by the door. So I don't ever figure out what the answer is to that, why there was a stain there, and also the stain by the door. It, that will forever remain a mystery, and we will just never know. Now at this point, it's time to go on, and we are going to do some painting, which is one of my... One of my least favorite things in real life, but one of the things I'm actually okay with in the game of House Flipper 2. So we're going to get back into painting. It, of course, takes me a little while to remember, remember exactly what I need to do to paint because it had been a while since I've been here. So you got your, your traditional fumbling and then we'll, we actually figure out, okay, that's what we need to do in order to set the uh, dimensions and get the paint borders where we want them. So we get a pretty nice size rectangle. We can't really get much bigger than that because of our positioning where we are in the room. And now at this point, it's just time to do a whole bunch of painting and get all of this taken care of. I'm pretty sure at some point here, I made some comments about how amazed I was at the amount of paint that we had on the roller here. Because again, in real life, this wouldn't be happening. You wouldn't be able to have that much paint on your roller and paint like three fourths of a wall with with one roll of paint it'd be real nice if you could but no it doesn't work that way if you've never painted before no that's that's not how it goes it does not do that so we've got this section just about done and then at this point then it becomes a matter of moving over and getting all of the corners that we didn't get before so we're going to go over here and once we finally figure out how to make the original borders go away then we set up borders here and we are going to get this painted. And I think I struggle a little bit with figuring out how to operate the roller, even though I knew how to operate the roller a minute ago. <laughs> so we then move on to the bottom border here. And again, getting as much as we can. And then we move over a bit. And that takes care of the bottom border. And then we're going to, again, struggling with the roller for reasons that I cannot fathom. And I'm going to dab the wall a couple of times instead of actually painting the wall. And then I realize, okay, yeah, we just got to hold down the roller and then roll on the wall. And still, for whatever reason, stop. <laughs> so, so something that should be so easy is something that I somehow make so difficult. And I don't quite know why. But we're just about done with this part of the wall. And we've got the borders all set. And then we're going to get this all taken care of. And now we've got a nice off-white wall and life is good and i feel like okay now we're done painting everything's good let's go ahead let's sell this paint and everything's good and then i realize uh yeah i've got a whole other wall <laughs> that i still have to paint uh so no i'm not done yet and now i have to go ahead and rebuy the paint because i sold the paint and now i need to get it for this wall and then we're going to repeat the process once again over here and we actually get the borders, the whole border on this one. And then we're going to actually start the painting again, still fumbling with the roller. Um, I don't know why. And then we're going to go over here and take care of this. It is nice the fact that they do have the, the blue borders on there. So it's, it's kind of like their version of painter's tape, which is probably why they made it blue because painter's tape is normally blue, at least here it is. And then we're going to move over to this side. So yeah, you cannot paint outside of the blue painter's tape, which is really, really good. Because again, in real life, I'd, I'd have paint everywhere. Just, it, it would literally be everywhere throughout the room. Uh, so now we finally have gotten our first star of three. It has taken us almost 40 minutes, but we're finally up to star number one on this house. So this is probably going to be the way that a lot of these house flips go from now on is that they're, they're going to take quite some time. So there's not going to be small jobs anymore 
I don't think. I think at this point the jobs are going to just start getting bigger and bigger as time goes on. And now we can go ahead and sell the rest of our paint, so we do that. And now we get into the fun part, especially if you love decorating, of putting the room together. So once again, we're starting with the biggest things in the room. And in this case, that's going to be the bed. Now, again, where where you would want to put the bed? I don't know. I decided that this was the best place to put it. You could put it up against the wall. You could put it a little bit away from the wall facing the opposite direction. It's hard to say. Now, in this case, I almost put the nightstand backwards. And then I realized, oh, yeah, it's got drawers on it. So you should probably have the drawers facing out away from the wall. <laughs> so we make that change just in time. Uh, next, we have a mirror, which can go basically anywhere on this wall. And I decide, at first I would try to figure out, can it go on the door? But it apparently cannot. That or I was just not close enough to the door. But I don't know if it can actually go on the door. And we end up putting it right over there by the door. So that way, if you don't have a door stop on there, then uh, if the door opens too far, then of course the, uh, the doorknob is going to smash right into the mirror and cause all kinds of problems. But that's for the owner to deal with. This is the biggest world map I've ever seen. I was thankful that it was actually able to make it onto one of those walls because that thing was massive and just barely fit, which is probably the way they, they designed it to be. Now we just get into some smaller stuff. So we got some candles, we got an alarm clock, we got a table lamp, all this going up here and putting all this onto the nightstand. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which is the front of the lamp. And so once we have that all taken care of, then we go from there. Then we have a dresser, which of course I should have put that into the room first, but I did not. And thankfully it did not come to haunt me, come back to haunt me um, because that could have been an issue had I waited to put that one away or wait to put that one in the room. Now, in this case, I do realize on this go through that I do actually need three plant pots. So, because I have three plants that need to be planted. So I'm gonna plant one there and then I'm gonna, or no, I decide that I'm actually gonna put them all into the window. So my first thought was I was gonna put one on the dresser and I probably should have still put one on the dresser. Now that I look at it again, it's like, yeah, one would have probably been nice on the dresser. But instead I put them all in the window. And of course, you've got to make sure that you have all the proper spacing because otherwise the feng shui in the room is completely off. And that's not the way that we design houses here. We've got to have the feng shui. Anything less than that is just not going to be tolerated. So we're going to get these other two put into place. And we take the snapping off so we can get everything placed kind of right there in the middle. And once we have all of these, then I don't think that we have much left in this room at this point. Yeah, we just have the vase, and that's it. And then the vase we actually decide, or vase, if you will, goes right up there on the dresser. So now we have another room done, and I think the only room that we have left at this point is the bathroom. And so now we're going to leave this room, make our way out, close the door behind us, and then go into this little disaster scene. And, okay, now looking at this room, I discover the toilet's on the right. And that's not at where I end up putting the toilet. So I end up putting the toilet somewhere else. And that's fine. No problem. The toilet can go wherever the toilet wants to go. I, I put it in a different spot than where it was. But it's okay. We're doing a complete remodel on this place. Uh, we've got three things left to sell. We realize it's these three little wall hangers that apparently have some value. I don't know why they do, but they do. And, and that's fine. Um... So now it's going to be getting back to cleaning up the trash and we've got one window. So now we get in here and we start getting our trash collected. Thankfully, this isn't all that hard, but we do finally fill up the bag. So now we have to run outside and empty the bag out. And then we come back inside and get the rest of the trash. Which thankfully, now that we got increased uh, perks on trash collection, that makes that go a lot more quickly. And now at this point, uh, yeah, I, now we're, oh, it's, since we're done with all the trash, then we go out here, we take the trash and throw it all away since we don't need trash bags anymore. And now it's back to the magical cloth that does all of the cleaning. And we get rid of all the stains. And again, like I've said a couple of times, some of these stains look like they need something more serious than just wiping them away and saying, okay, everything's all fine. Um, this house may have some issues with the foundation, may have some issues with the walls, but you know what? That's going to be for the next owner to deal with. 
that will be on them. They can deal with that. And I'm not going to worry about it. We finally find all the stains. That one was hiding in plain sight, as they always do. And now we got one window to squeegee. So we give this a nice little squeegee job. Everything is good with that. And now at this point, it's time to put on all of the, uh, the floor surfaces and all the wall surfaces. So this one's interesting because they only ask for stone tiles and they only ask for the um, whatever the other ones are. I forget what they call those. So my, my first thought is I'm just going to take the stone tiles and I'm going to put them over here where the shower is going to go because there's that little outline right there. And then we get a surfaces perk point, which is real nice because with the surfaces perk point, now we can hit bigger areas. Or, or the other option was heavy lifting where you can lift more stones. But the one that we decided to do is the one that's called make it big. So you can put down more surface at a time, which to me means a lot more. And so I think at some point we do actually try that out, but not just yet. Because now I'm thinking, I'm debating, what do I want to put down next and where do I want to put things? Because the next thing we have to get is we have to get the other, uh, we got to get the subway tiles. And then it becomes a matter of, well, where do we put the subway tiles? Because the only things that they're asking for are the subway tiles and the, and the stone floor. So I don't want subway tiles on the floor, I don't think. And so and then I realized that I, I, I wanted to change the colors, but I did them in reverse. So I made the grout the color of the tile and I made the tile the color of the grout. So it was, yeah, I had it backwards and had to fix it. So then we make that fix and everything's good. Now it's time to actually get that out. And again, we're sitting here thinking, okay, do I want the tile on the floor? And that doesn't seem right, but at the same time, the stone doesn't look right on the floor either. So it was a, it was a bit of a quandary. And now we're, look at us with the five by five tile laying, we're just slapping it on there with, without a care in the world and putting it on with uh, relative ease compared to where we were before. So I only wish the tile also went up in real life like that. Regrettably, it does not. That's just not the way it works. Um, that's why the game is not the same as reality. So now I still have this issue of what do I put on the floor? And I guess I could have put on other subway tile, but we actually decided that we were just gonna go with the stone floor all throughout the room. And I guess I could have put down another layer, a, another color of subway tile. But I said, you know what? We're just going to go with this, and we're going to go with this. We're going to go with the stone floors. And if uh, again, if the homeowner doesn't like it, then that's that's on them. But I mean, we're we're doing this as a flip, so it's not like we're renovating a house. We're we're actually, well, we are renovating it, but we're not renovating it for the original owner. So we're doing it for a brand new owner and it's gonna be up to the brand new owners to whether or not they like it. So that, that that's on them. So, so I'm not gonna worry about that all that much. So we're getting pretty close to the home stretch here. All we got left is we have the shower, which for some reason it was being a little bit challenging for me to put that shower in. I don't know why, because I did actually see that thing go green a couple of times. I think I was trying to rotate it. And I don't know why I was trying to rotate it because you, you cannot rotate the shower in this room. It just, it goes in that way and that way only. Um, next, we have the fancy toilets, because that one is fancy. And I had forgotten where the toilet was before. And so we decide that we're going to take the toilet and eventually we set settle on putting it right over there by the shower, right in front of the shower door, because of course we do. <laughs> and then the uh, cabinet is gonna go over here on this wall. And it's interesting because you can kind of set the cabinet at any height you want or the sink at any height you want. And we end up settling on that. And then lastly, but not leastly, we have the mirror, which we're going to put up there on the wall and make sure that we actually have it centered with the with the sink, which at this point now we do. And so now we've got three stars. And the only thing that we have left at this point is we have that one piece of trash that is still outside that we still at this point cannot find and so now we once again grab our trash bag start once again furiously hitting the uh the flipper sense button trying to figure out where it is and this is the point where i go upstairs and i say okay is it up here and it's not because the the trash indicator goes away so now we're back to the one piece of trash that we've got 
and we still cannot figure it out at this point. And we see right there, there is one piece of trash out here, and we still cannot find it. And we're now going to do yet another lap around the house. And I'm probably, once again, killing time, and I'm probably going, hmm, and huh, and things like that. And at this point, I realize you can actually turn the lights on, which is kind of cool. I, I never knew that before. And then I'm thinking, well, maybe the trash is behind the garbage can. So now we're going to decide that we're going to try and move the garbage can and try and get it right up against the railing. And then the thing I forget is that you can't put the garbage can right against the railing unless you close the lid. And so I'm sitting here. It's like, why is that not going up against the railing? And then I decide I'm going to move it out a little bit and set it out as far away as I can. And then I re realize, oh, yeah, you got to close the lid. And then I forget how to close the lid. So it, it, it's always something. So I'm looking at it. It's like, how do I close the lid? And I think eventually I figured it out. There I go. Then I finally figured it out. And I say, okay, now I can put it closer to the wall. And I'm still trying to figure out where that one piece of trash is. Now, you're going to see there's going to be a very, very brief amount of time when we make our way around to the front where there's going to be a little flicker. Now, it's not back here. I'm, I, originally, I'm thinking it might be up there. And now I'm at the back of the house. And again, I'm, I'm just I'm in a, a small quandary trying to figure out where this one piece of trash is. It's just not happening. I'm not figuring it out at all. But we are going to get back around to the front. And when we get around to the front, we're going to realize that it's it's going to show up for just a brief second. I'm looking at that rock, thinking maybe that's it. So for just a brief second, we're going to see it. There's going to be an indicator right there. It shows up on the screen. It says collect trash. But that trash is not, it does not light up. So I don't know if maybe you crouch and it shows up. I'm assuming you can crouch. I don't know. But we finally found the last piece of trash. And everything in the house is now done. Now that we found the one mysteriously hidden piece of trash, it does look nice. I mean, we do have the janky planters up there. And again, that's just how they know that Rusty Champagne was here and redid the house. And we get our three stars, a one, a two, a three. And we make $25,000 on the job. And life is good. And now we make our way back. And now we're going to get a call from Tom Marino, so we're going to listen to him. Hello there. How did you like your first full house flip? So you actually enjoy it. That's great. Pinnacove needs a talented house renovator. So when the town council members finally come to their senses, we have someone to fix that poor old driftwood house. But in the meantime, I have an idea for how you can practice your house flipping skills. There's a site where you can look for rundown houses. Just buy them, do your magic, and put them on sale. I'm sure that with your work quality, you'll find buyers in no time. You did so well with the last house that I managed to sell it for way more than I expected. So, I want to share some of the profit with you. It should be enough for you to buy your own house to flip. If you want to, of course. Take care and good luck with your career. So that's the last we hear from Tom Marino at this point. And now we learn about how we can actually go ahead and flip our own houses and what we need to do to do it. So we will eventually take a look here in the laptop and see where that is here in our laptop. But we take a look at that note for no particular reason. I'm not quite sure why. And then we go in here. And so if we go up here and if we look at the houses, there's the house that we own. And then if we look here, these are the houses that are available to us. So their houses looks like as low as $42,000. And then they kind of go up from there. There are houses in Pinnacle suburbs. There are houses in Crayfish Coast. And that will be the beginning of what I would imagine is going to be the rest of our life here in the world of House Flipper. And that was our very first house flipping experience. And so that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like. If you really like this video, I'd appreciate it even more if you get, consider giving the channel a subscribe. But until we meet again, thank you as always for being a part of all my silliness. I am future editor Rusty Champagne saying thank you very much. And we will see you later.